What kind of pranks do pilots pull on new flight attendants? I'll explain it all, coming up. Hey 7-4 crew, welcome back. If you don't know me, my name's Kelsey. I'm a 747 pilot. My channel 7-4 gear is all about aviation. Today I'm here in a city and this is the view from my hotel room. Someone had left a comment saying instead of telling us the city let us guess so I did a survey on YouTube and asked you guys what you wanted to do. I think about 75% of you said you guys wanted to guess but made sure I told you at the end. So that's the view from my hotel room. Leave a comment let me know where you think I'm at and towards the end of this video I'll tell you exactly where I'm at. If you're a new flight attendant or planning to become a flight attendant you're gonna to wanna to watch all of these pranks because they get meaner and more embarrassing as they go on. Now most of these pranks are pulled on newer flight attendants because most flight attendants believe when they show up to work at the airlines that the pilots they're gonna be working with are true professionals. And while we're flying, that's true, we are very, very professional, but at the end of the day, we are like little boys sometimes. Now just the other day, I was flying with a captain who was a female and we were talking about this video that I'm gonna do and she was actually telling me about some of the pranks she pulled, so I guess it's not just the guy pilots that are immature, some of the female pilots are immature too. Now for the record, like all my other cockpit confessionals, I've never participated in any of these things. I love all of you guys and all of you gals out there that are flight attendants. I appreciate everything that you do. My aunt was a flight attendant growing up, so I know exactly what you guys are going through. And I mean, really, is this the face of somebody who would play pranks on a flight attendant? All right, let's get into it. Most people don't know that commercial aircraft don't use keys to start the engine. And that means most new flight attendants also don't know that you don't need keys to start the engine. Usually we know who the new flight attendants are because they'll usually tell us when they show up or we can see by their employee number or a few other ways they look a little bit lost just like a new pilot when he's new at the airline also looks lost. So usually with those things you kind of know that you're going to have a new flight attendant. Well in this story we're standing at the gate waiting for some paperwork and Shannon, a brand new flight attendant, showed up to go on a trip with us. She let us know she was brand new, she had just finished her initial training. Uh, flight attendants do an on-the-job training when they finish all their basic training in the schoolhouse. They go out and do some actual flying with a senior flight attendant to kind of teach them the ropes. So she had just finished all of that and she was doing her first trip as a flight attendant without any supervision. And as soon as we found that out, we decided it was time to pull the keys prank on her. So when the plane pulled up to the gate and the crew was getting off, we were getting ready to go down and I said, Oh, Shannon, I need them to sign a few things. Why don't you go ahead and get down there and start doing all your stuff? So we let her go down first. Then we waited about three or four minutes and we headed down. Now, of course, by the time we got to the plane, she was diligently doing all her work because like everybody, when they're new at their job, they want to do it as fast and as well as they can. So when we got on there, the pilots went into the flight deck and we started doing our thing. The other flight attendant started doing her thing. And then once we were done, we were all kind of just hanging out in the front galley. About 10 minutes from boarding, I said, hey, Shannon, I need the keys. And she looked at me like, she said, what are you talking about? And so we started laughing, pretending she was trying to play a joke on us. I was like, oh, come on, Shannon. No, seriously, I need the keys so we can start the engine. And she's, of course, saying, I, I, I don't have any keys. I said, Shannon, you know that when you're the first person to go down to the plane, you get the keys from the other crew. How are we going to start this plane if we don't have the keys to the engines? We can't start the engines. We can't let the people board if we don't have the keys. We need to find these keys before people board and they're coming in 10 minutes. So me and the other pilot go onto the flight deck and because we're just laughing so hard, I was like, hey, we're just going to have to look around in here inside the flight deck and you just go look in the back. So she is tearing through every seat, looking in the seat backs, going through the whole back of the plane. By the time she gets to the front of the plane and she's like, I don't see them, I don't see where they're at. I said, okay, look, uh, go up and ask the gate agent. So she ran up there, she asked the gate agent, and of course the gate agent is kind of confused, like, what, no, I don't, I don't have any keys. I don't know if she's ever been asked that or if she was playing part of the joke. We never told the gate agent what was going on. When Shannon came running back down, she saw us all stand there in the galley and laughing, and at that point she realized it was a joke. Later that night, me and the other pilot, we bought all of her drinks when we went out. So at the end of the day, she thought it was funny, or she thought it was funny after she'd had a few drinks at least. Pilots and flight attendants get something called per diem when we go out on a trip. That per diem is what we use to pay for food and things like that when we're out on the road because obviously we can't take all of our food with us when we're out traveling. Some pilots and flight attendants do, but this per diem is something that the airlines give us that we can use for food and things like that when we're on the road. Now, it's something that is explained to us when we start the initial training, but 
in initial training, there is a lot of information that they give you. And so because that's all kind of told you in the first week or so, it's a bit of sensory overload. And there's a lot of that information that you forget because then you start to go into the testing phase of being a flight attendant. And that's another very stressful time. So a lot of that information gets forgotten. And depending on the airline, it'll be somewhere between 40 and 60 bucks a day while you're out flying. So it's a decent amount of money. Now, when you're a newer airline pilot and you're flying on these smaller regional jets that are usually 50 to 70 seats, usually the pilots and the flight attendants will all stay together for two or three or four days. And it's really cool because you're able to make some really great friendships. And still to this day, I still text and talk to a lot of the flight attendants that I used to fly with when I was at the regionals, even though they've gone to other airlines. And some of them are still there, but the most of them have gone to other airlines. In this story, I was with a new flight attendant named Anna. Anna was on her first or second month at the airline. We were doing a two-day trip. Now, usually we do a three or four day trip, but in this story, it was just two days. We were finishing up the first day and we were talking about where we were gonna go that night. And I said, Anna, did you already get your per diem money? And she said, I don't know what you're talking about. What per diem money? I said, yeah, I need your, I need your employee number and your birthday so I get your per diem money. I brought her into the flight deck and I said, okay, I need your birth year and your employee number. Before I continue this story, I should explain, in the flight deck of most airliners is a printer. This is an example of the printer on the 747. It's a bit bigger than what we had at the regionals, but this is an example of a printer. And this printer obviously we use to print out weather or different information, messages from crew scheduling or from dispatch while we're in flight. If there's any type of emergency or anything like that, we can get a message and print it off through this printer. We can also feed the paper like this. We hit this button and the paper actually comes out. Well, that's because there's paper that's loaded in there. If we take out the paper, and we put in money, then when we hit the paper feed button, money comes out. Genius! Now you know on the very last leg, we had changed out the paper and put some money in there. We put a $50 bill in there. So when she came into the flight deck, I got her birth year and her employee number, and I punched it into a message, and then I went to a totally different screen, hit send to get weather. So that way it would make a noise when it came back with the weather information. When it came back with that weather information, I hit the paper feed button and it spit out $50. So I handed her the $50 and she looked at me so confused, but I just handed her $50. So who's going to say no to that? But she was like, oh, oh, okay, cool. Cool. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. And she just like put it in her pocket and then we left the plane. So in the van ride to the hotel, I could see her. She was sitting back there in a little bit of a angry, confused look on her face. And she leaned over and she goes, how, how come no one's ever given me money before? I said, oh really, is this the first time that someone actually gave you the money? Sorry, sometimes new flight attendants don't know about that and the pilots know they don't know. And so they just ask how old you are just to try to be friendly. And with that and your employee number, which is on the paperwork, we were able to get your employee number and your age. So then we just punch that into the computer and they usually just keep the money because they know you don't know any better. If you saw the Hollywood versus reality that I did on Madagascar 2 or the one I just did on Airplane, you know that I can tell these jokes pretty straight face, which is exactly what I did with Anna. So after I, after I said that, I could see the look on her face where she started to make a hit list of all these different pilots she'd flown with over her first month or two, and I could see her getting a little bit more angry. And I said, all right, I'll see you downstairs. Everybody, let's meet up in 30 minutes and we'll go out. Now, I don't know what Anna was doing in a room for that 30 minutes besides changing, but I have a feeling she was making a hit list and I knew for sure I was gonna have to tell her before the night was over, before she started running around through the crew rooms and finding these pilots and being like, this better have my money. So that night after we'd had a few drinks, me and the other pilot and the other flight attendant, we told her what was going on. We let her keep the 50 bucks. So obviously she wasn't upset about it all. And it was a good laugh for all of us. But that is the ATM prank. Pilots generally know when the flight attendants have completed their beverage service and once they complete their beverage service, they go and collect some trash. After that's all done, they're usually hanging out or talking with the other flight attendant or, I don't know, rearranging their carts. I don't quite exactly understand, but there's always carts slamming around and they're always moving stuff around and they're getting ready for the next flight or for the next crew or whatever they're doing. This prank is usually pulled on the last leg going home. So the pilots will call the flight attendant, get the new flight attendant on the phone. And they'll say, hey, listen, we need to do an ozone check, okay? Can you get that done before we land? And usually the response is kind of confused, like, okay, wait, what? Like, kind of confused, right? Because what's an ozone check? And of course, if you're a pilot and you're doing the prank, well, you're going to say, uh, really? They didn't have you do an ozone check when you were doing your initial training? 
And I'll say, no. And then you get really upset like, man, I don't understand what's happening, why these instructors aren't doing this. Okay, look, here's the ozone check. Here's what I need you to do. You hang up the phone and you make an announcement. You tell everybody they need to remain in their seat because the FAA has requested this aircraft have an ozone check. So you make everybody sit in their seat. You take the biggest trash bag that you have. And the biggest trash bag in the back of the plane is actually pretty big. So you take that big trash bag, you walk to the back of the plane, you inflate it, you hold it over your head, and you briskly walk through the cabin and fill it with all the air, as much as the air from the cabin as you can. When you get to the front of the plane, you need to close it and tie it off and set it to the side. I need you to notate the exact time that you made that walk through in the cabin. So once that's done, to set it to the side and then we'll deal with it when we get on the ground. So of course, as you descend, that bag, that big bag that was full of air has started to deflate and it's just sitting there somewhere in one of the closets. So now when you walk out and they let all the passengers off, if you're really mean, you say, okay, great, I need you to take that ozone bag and take it over to the manager's office and drop it in front of his door and make sure that that note is attached to it. And of course, a new flight attendant will be like, oh, okay, yeah, I'll go do that. And of course, when the manager shows up, they're looking at the trash bag full of air with a note on it and they're like, what is this? Now, you don't have to be mean and make them walk through the airport with this empty bag and note, but if you're really mean, you do that. But you have to let them know that that's a joke. Otherwise, they're going to be thinking that's a real thing and you don't want them to have the wrong idea when they're out flying. Crew resource management is something that's very important when you're flying. I always tell new pilots when you're flying, you need to listen to your flight attendants. In a lot of cases, those flight attendants have more experience on that aircraft than you do. Something that we're all taught in initial training and every year as we go through training is the importance of working together as a team with your flight attendants and the pilots. The flight attendants get training about working with us, we get training about working with them, we talk and kind of see what do they want more from us and we tell them what we expect or need from them. So it's really good and it's really important that there's a really strong connection there and you know because a lot of times flight attendants will be in the back of the plane and if they call up and they say something like something doesn't smell right or something doesn't look or sound right it's very important for you as a pilot to take that very very serious these flight attendants spend a lot of time back there so they know what things should smell like or things should sound like and something isn't right it's important that you really listen and take that information so when you have a new flight attendant and you call her and you say hey listen we got an indication of the left side of the plane the window heating is out, they're gonna take that very serious. So in this prank, you call the flight attendant, you get the new one on your phone and you say, hey, listen, uh, we got a left, left side of the plane window heat indication. We don't know if it's right or it's a faulty indication. What I need you to do is go through the cabin and touch all the windows. Let me know which ones are cold. Now, this really only works on small regional jets because you, don't, you can't reach over three people realistically. But on smaller regional jets, you'll maybe have one or two seats on a side. So you can easily reach over. So usually that flight attendant will go down and touch all the different windows and note which ones are cold. And of course, the other flight attendant is usually sitting in the back and looking at them thinking, What is wrong with you? And of course, once you land, you tell them that was just a big joke. Now, before I tell this last very mean story that you could probably get fired for, I'm currently in Amsterdam. I'm in Holland. It's a beautiful, beautiful day out here. Yeah, I'm being self-quarantined in my own hotel room. And so on a beautiful sunny day in Holland, I'm stuck and can't go outside. It is terrible, but that's life. Something that is very serious at the airlines is drug testing. We get drug tested when we start our job and we get randomly drug tested throughout our entire career. Obviously, we're in a very, very safety sensitive job. You can't have the pilots or the flight attendants on drugs or involved in drugs in any way. So randomly when you're flying, you'll get drug tested. For this prank to work, you need everybody on the aircraft willing to participate because the reality is if this prank goes wrong, there's a good chance you're gonna get fired. Here's what you do. You call the flight attendants in the back and you say, hey, listen, we're getting randomly drug tested when we land. Don't go to the bathroom until we land. So when you land and you let everybody off the plane before the other crew shows up, you go into the bathroom and everybody goes in one at a time. Usually you'll have both pilots go and then the other flight attendants will go and the flight attendant that's getting pranked will go last. And what you do is you go in and you have a can of apple juice sitting in there in the bathroom. And everybody goes in and pours just a little bit of that apple juice in their glass. And so they keep coming out and when the last flight attendant goes in, there's no can of apple juice because the last flight attendant has thrown it in the trash. So that flight attendant pees in her cup like she thinks she's supposed to do. 
So when she's coming out of the bathroom, one of the pilots is on the phone and they're saying, oh man, no, really? This thing is canceled? Ah. And then everybody has to act very, very upset about this thing getting canceled. So you hang up your phone, pretend to hang up your phone, and you go, man, this is the worst part. This is the second time this year this has happened to me. And then, and then you say, oh man, I, I really hate this part. And then you drink your apple juice really quick. Of course, the flight attendant that's standing there holding her piss is going to be freaked out about what just happened. And she's going to look at you like, oh. So now the other crew end up doing their shots. Now you have to have someone standing very close to this flight attendant so they don't drink their own pee like Bear Grylls. Drinking your own pee is truly unpleasant. So they're going to be staring at you going, wait, why is everybody drinking their piss? And you go, look, here's the thing. That's biohazard. That's human waste biohazard. So we can't just throw it out onto the ramp or in the trash can because it's human waste. So they make us drink it. And they say just because it's a little bit, it's not a big deal. So that's why we do it. And so you drink it and then everybody drinks their shot. And of course, they're going to be standing there staring like, what in the world is going on right now? So everybody has to be on board and not laugh. And like I said, someone has to stand near them so they can hold their hand away in case they reach up and try to drink their own piss. So after that person is staring at everybody confused for a minute or two, you tell them it's a joke, you make them throw their pee down the toilet, but it seems that nobody thinks about putting the pee down the toilet. They all think it's going to go in the trash. So you just make them throw their pee down the toilet, throw the cup away, and you go off the plane and they're just happy they didn't drink their piss and you hope they don't report you and get you fired from your job. So even though I told you a lot of these jokes in first person, like I said, I've never done any of these things to a flight attendant. So those are one of the ways that the pilots are mean to flight attendants. If you want to see some of the ways that flight attendants annoy pilots, I did a YouTube collaboration with a great YouTuber who's also a flight attendant. Her name is Stella. I'll put a link to that video right here. Go check it out. I look forward to hearing from you. Until then, keep the blue side up.